In today's show, we're gonna talk about the health benefits of sourdough bread and sourdough bread-like compounds like sourdough pancakes or sourdough pizza. Now, I know this is gonna irk a lot of you because many of you are low carb and I'm not encouraging you to go out there and start eating more bread. I'm just making this video because I'm blown away at the amount of research there is on the sourdough process and the fermentation of ancient grains in terms of the increased absorption of minerals the reduced glycemic index of properly fermented sourdough bread-like products and breads, as well as uh, the improved digestibility and the reduction in fermentable carbohydrates leading to uh, changes in the bowel. And so I, I think what inspired this video is sourdough is all the rage as of late. Many people during the COVID-19 pandemic started to make their own bread at home and so forth. And uh, people who are full on celiac or gluten sensitive are able to actually eat and not experience the same symptoms linked with wheat product consumption that they ordinarily would if they were to buy bread from the grocery store. So I started to hear a lot of anecdotal reports of this. And over the years, going back to early as 2006, I remember hearing clients that I would work with in a nutrition setting uh, at my, my mentor's office, Gerard Guillory, who's a medical doctor. I would work with clients. Was, that's how I kind of started to get into the nutrition coaching field. Uh, many people said, you know what, when I went to Europe, I had the sourdough bread in Italy or France or Spain, and I didn't experience the normal gastrointestinal symptoms that I would experience experience when I had bread here, why might that be? And I had absolutely no idea. I mean, a lot of people point to glyphosate and Roundup and things like that. But when I started to dive into the research on the uh, physiology of sourdough digestion and the changes in the composition of properly fermented grains, I've been blown away. It turns out that many people historically would consume bread that had only been fermented. So again, I'm not promoting bread consumption for everyone. Another impetus for this is quite personal. My daughter is an elite runner and it's hard for her to get ample carbohydrates for uh, training and, and some of the running that she's been doing. And this was just an easy way to help uh, have her more variety in her diet. I mean, she's been mostly low carb and, and you know, keto and carnivore for most of her life, but I found that she was getting pretty lean and, and almost too lean with all the running that she's been doing. And so I wanted to come up with something that she would she would actually quite enjoy. I like sprouted rice. But she didn't like that. So I'm like, well, what if I get into sourdough bread making? And we have made sourdough pizza and this has been fermented for over 24 hours. And I'll explain the importance of fermentation and how that actually changes the anti-nutrients uh, and increases the bioavailability of the minerals found in the uh, wheat product, uh, as well as improving the, the digestibility and lowering the glycemic index. I think that's what the research really shows. And I'm quite impressed with this. So if you do eat bread and you eat um, grain type products, the, the take home from this video is that it should be fermented, sprouted and or fermented. And it turns out that when that process happens, you break down some of the anti-nutrients, you lower the glycemic index and you increase the bioavailability of the many minerals that are actually present in something like in corn wheat or uh, heirloom wheat products and so forth. Now, I, this is not to say that these grain products are any way nutritionally superior to animal-based foods or animal-sourced foods. I'm a huge fan, as you know, of yogurt, of raw milk, of egg yolks, of liver, red meat, lamb. But for some people, especially uh, you know, young children and my clients that I've worked with, they get bored of just eating those foods over and over again. So what foods can we introduce into the diet that makes something a little bit more sustainable uh, yet is health more healthy than some of the things that you can buy at the store and that is why i'm a big fan of the sourdough process because you start out with a mother culture and you start to ferment uh, the the ground up wheat products for at least 14 hours and so you're really fermenting and helping to break down and improve the digestibility reduce the glycemic index and increase the bioavailability and accessibilities accessibility of the minerals because the phytates are actually broken down by the phytase enzymes found in uh, the yeast, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, uh, as well as the different bacteria that are part of your mother culture. So by improving the digestibility and improving the nutritional profile, you're taking a food that would be sort of loaded with anti-nutrients and bound up, all the minerals would be bound up to phytic acid. Now they're more bioavailable. And now you can actually you know, harness some of the health benefits from the magnesium, the inositol, the iron, zinc, and, and various compounds that are actually found in grains that, to be honest, are, are not too unhealthy. I mean, these are things that, that are, I think, health promoting. And then you also get the bacteria, which I think is, is important. So I want to share with you some studies. But first, 
As always, I'm grateful that you're here. Thanks for tuning in. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. Now, since we're talking about carbs, I know not everyone can digest carbs and I'm not promoting bread and pancakes and pizza for every single person. But if you're metabolically healthy, if you exercise, uh, these are just another way to think about food-like products because it turns out that bread here in North America uh, and, and other parts of the world actually are now not even being fermented. They're using baker's yeast, which we'll talk about the harms of that shortly. But since we're talking about metabolic health, a tool that can help you in your trajectory of supporting metabolic health is berberine. It has a 3,000-year history of use in traditional Chinese medicine as well as Ayurvedic medicine. It's one of the few natural products that you can take and actually directly objectively measure showing its effectiveness. You can look at your ketones as well as your blood glucose levels. Berberine actually works and it helps support metabolic health and it might even help to curb evening food cravings for sweets and uh, pastry items in the evening time, things like ice cream, cookies, and beyond. So if you want to optimize your metabolic health and help curb those pesky evening food cravings, you can save by going to myoscience.com and click the link in the description below and use the code podcast over at myoscience. There's hundreds of reviews on the Berberine Fasting Accelerator. It's a great tool, especially in the evening time to help support metabolic health. So Getting back to sourdough, again, there's tons of research here. I've been blown away. Uh, this paper is one of my favorites if you're interested in learning more about this. Uh, this was published in Trends in Food Science and Technology. The title of this paper is 30 Years of Knowledge on Sourdough Fermentation, a Systematic Review. And this really goes in, this was published, by the way, by Italian scientists. You know, I just thought, for most of my life, you know, as an adult, that bread is just off the table. Like, I'm not gonna consume bread products. I can't have pancakes. I can't have pizza. I can't have these foods because, you know, we know that wheat mostly has, you know, anti nutrients and phytates and, you know, whatever minerals are, and health promoting properties are, are found in the wheat. It's unaccessible due to because it's bound up by anti nutrients. But when you ferment wheat products via the sourdough process, it turns out that, as I mentioned earlier, the phytase enzymes are breaking down the phytic acid. They're liberating and helping to improve the absorption of health-promoting minerals. You're lowering the FODMAP levels and fermentable carbohydrates that cause the indigestion. I mean, how many times have you had a sandwich or pizza and you feel like you have a brick in your stomach and you're farting and you're really gassy? You know, with sourdough like uh, you know, pizza dough or even sourdough crackers or sourdough bread, you're not going to get uh, that same adverse gastrointestinal uh, challenge there. And in fact, it's considered a low gluten product as well as a low glycemic index product. Now, you may be wondering, well, why would I be promoting sourdough? I must have some conflict of interest. Zero whatsoever. I have no affiliates, no connection to any bread or dough or anything other than the fact that um, we've been making this now for but all summer and then now in the fall, um, you know, making having people over and they try the properly fermented sourdough pizza crust and they're blown away. We've been making these chips and crackers, you know, from Bill Schindler's book, Eat Like a Human. People are blown away. Uh, the bread has been amazing. It's not something that we eat every single day. This is a celebratory food. I think, you know, the, the idea of having bread all the time, it's, it's very carb heavy. This is really only consumed on days where we're doing a lot of exercise or a lot of movement or in a celebratory type fashion, having a, a group dinner. It's like, hey, let's break bread. We recently had a thermal party, um, the cold plunge, sauna, all that. Afterwards, you know, had some sourdough pizza, some sourdough bread and with me. And it was awesome. Everyone was just like really impressed and loved the taste. And uh, it was a fun way to celebrate. So it's just a, a different way to induce or introduce novelty uh, into your diet. And I think um, there are some health benefits. I, I don't think that wheat is somehow nutritionally superior to grass-fed steak or eggs, right? That's not to say that there aren't some health benefits. As I mentioned, the magnesium, the zinc, the iron, the inositol, um, there are some other you know, compounds in there that periodically um, can actually help to improve the bioavailability of other animal source nutrients as well, um, and then help prevent the boredom. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people, when they go keto, they go carnivore, they get really strict for a while, they start to lose some body fat, improve their health, and everything is going in the right direction, but they start to get bored of having ribeyes all the time or ground beef, and this is just a way to add some diversity into that. So I wanted to give you this kind of overview, share with you some of these research studies. Another review here is titled Nutritional Benefits of Sourdoughs, a systematic review that was published in Advances in Nutrition, talking about everything that I've sort of mentioned here, all the different bacteria in that are part of the sourdough process. But most importantly, in my opinion, is the anti-nutrients and the phytates and things like that that are normally found in unfermented uh, leavened bread that is 
that is leavened with yeast. And so this is the thing, you know, if you read more into these uh, studies, you know, for many of us, it was bread was just off the table. This is like a processed food, you know, because many of the bread makers here, uh, starting in the 1950s in parts of France and so forth, when yeast was really discovered as a way to accelerate the leavening process and the rising of bread, uh, it, you know, normally that would take a long time. And it, if you've ever made sourdough bread, it takes a long time for the bulk ferment to cause that rise in bread if, you, if you're not using yeast. And so to streamline the manufacturing process of bread and other pastries, yeast has been introduced and it rapidly accelerates the leavening process, but it entirely circumvents the natural microbial fermentation of the wheat products and and thereby uh, doesn't lower the glycemic index, doesn't decrease the amount of anti-nutrients. Uh, so therefore, you're not getting the accessibility of the minerals that we've been talking about, inositol, magnesium, zinc, iron, things like that. And it's still going to have a very high glycemic index because some of how the yeast and, and how the bacteria is growing is by metabolizing some of the carbohydrates in the by way of the sourdough process so you take a bread product that is normally high glycemic and make it moderately glycemic and so in my opinion that's a good idea and so that's why i wanted to make this video and help you better understand that there's a large dossier of literature um, suggesting that you know humans have been making sourdough like products for a very long time and fermenting legumes and lentils and beans buckwheat barley and wheat for at least 6500 years this is something that humans have been doing for a very very long time there was a piece of biblical text that i was reading a quote from that that went something to the effect of eat bread only if it's been fermented right so the bread that you buy at the store the reason why it's so unhealthy is because it's been leavened with yeast not with uh, actual bacteria and probiotic yeast that is found uh, in uh, your mother culture, like Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So if you want more videos, uh, cooking videos related to this, what I've been doing in, in, in our household and for my daughter and our family, um, those are coming and you'll see those in the description below. But I just think this is a really uh, important aspect of health. And this is probably why, you know, when, when I was traveling in Europe, I, I, I didn't see any obesity. Uh, many of the European breads and pastries are naturally leavened via the sourdough fermentation process, not using baker's yeast like we do here uh, in, in the West, particularly uh, North America, Canada, and uh, the U.S., and also Latin America as well. So what are your thoughts? Let me know if you've dabbled into the sourdough fermentation process yourself. This is a new tool for people, especially if you're kind of bored of the same old foods that you've been eating, avocado, olives, you know, some macadamia nuts. I mean, egg yolks, I love all those foods, but having a little bit of, of naturally leavened uh, bread with sourdough, some sourdough pancakes here and there, I think is a nice way to improve adherence to a healthy whole foods diet without having to, you know, get your sweet tooth satiated with some ultra processed sweets or junk food. So let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll catch you on a future video down the road.